Japan nuclear plant contaminates the oceans. The announcement by Japan's Agency for Natural Resources and Energy that high levels of radioactive cesium have been detected in seawater near the crippled nuclear reactors raises the prospect that radiation could enter the food chain. Cesium-137 levels were 20 times the normal level, about 1,000 feet from the effluent at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. That is far less from the level of the other main radioactive isotope spilling from the plant, iodine-131. It was found in concentrations of more than 1,150 times the maximum allowable for a seawater sample a mile north of the plant. Still, scientists say cesium-137 poses the greater long-term damage to the marine food chain. Iodine-131 degrades relatively fast, becoming half as potent every eight days. Hopefully, the radioactive risk can be combated by banning fishing and the consumption of seafood for a period of time, as the Japanese have already done. Cesium-137, on the other hand, has a half-life of 30 years. Worse still, it is absorbed by marine plants, which are eaten by fish and, like mercury, tends to become concentrated as it moves up the food chain. It's worrisome in that CS-137 is leaking, although the levels are still low, at least for now. At some point, this water that is pooling in various places is ultimately going to make its way out to the sea. If there is a lot of cesium-137 over an extended period, then you'll have something to really worry about. For now, the exact source of the cesium-137 is unclear, although some scientists have speculated that the seawater dumped on the overheating reactors to cool them, picked up radiation, and then washed back out to sea. But Japanese officials said highly radioactive water in several tunnels is threatening to overflow and may also contain cesium-137. Even so, the ocean has remarkable power to dilute radioactive effluence because of its sheer volume and depth. And the ocean is already slightly radioactive. Over the eons, elements like uranium have washed into it from rivers. More recently, humans have dumped radioactive materials into the marine environment, including dozens of nuclear warheads and reactors that are slowly decaying, as well as many thousands of barrels of radioactive waste. In October 1993, a Russian ship dumped hundreds of tons of low-level nuclear waste into the Sea of Japan, touching off a diplomatic row between Tokyo and Moscow. Oceanographers have monitored the areas around the dumps for dangerous levels of radioactivity, but typically find little of consequence because of the sea's powers of dilution. Even so, in 1994, most countries gave up the long-standing practice of dumping radioactive materials into the sea. Again, highly contaminated water is escaping a damaged reactor at the crippled nuclear power plant in Japan and could soon leak into the ocean, the country's nuclear regulator warned on Monday. The discovery poses a further setback to efforts to contain the nuclear crisis as workers find themselves in increasingly hazardous conditions. And another new finding, Tokyo Electric Power Company, which runs the Fukushima Daiichi Nuclear Power Station, said that it had detected an increase in levels of plutonium in soil samples taken from within the compound a week ago, raising fears of yet another dangerous element that may be escaping the crippled reactors. It just keeps getting worse and worse. It was unclear where the plutonium had come from. The reactors could be a source and tests of nuclear weapons in the atmosphere, which ended in 1980, left trace amounts of plutonium around the world. The highest levels in the soil of plutonium-238 were found about 500 yards from the mostly heavily damaged reactors company said. It said lower levels of plutonium-239 and 240 had also been found at amounts not significantly higher than normal. All the reported readings were within the safe range of plutonium levels in sediment and soil 
given by the United States Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry. But Tokyo Electric said the highest reading was more than three times the level found in Japan compared with the average over the last 20 years. American nuclear experts expressed confusion on Monday about the company's latest report that one form of plutonium was found at elevated levels at the Fukushima plant while other forms were not and suggested it could be a measurement error. The contaminated water threatening the ocean had radiation measuring 1,000 millisieverts per hour and was in an overflow tunnel outside the plant's reactor number two, Japan's nuclear regulator said at a news conference. The maximum dose allowed for workers at the plant is 250 millisieverts in a year. The tunnel leads from the reactor's turbine building where contaminated water was discovered on Saturday to an opening just 180 feet from the sea. The contaminated water level is now about three feet from the exit of the vertical U-shaped tunnel and rising. Contaminated water was also found at tunnels from the number one and number three reactors, though with much lower levels of radiation. The disclosure about the escaping contaminated water came as workers pressed their efforts to remove highly radioactive water from inside buildings at the plant. The high levels of radioactivity have made it harder for them to get inside the reactor buildings and control rooms to get equipment working again, slowing the effort to cool the reactors and spent fuel rods. Workers pumped less water into the reactors Monday in an effort to minimize the overflow of radioactive water from them, slowing the cooling process, Tokyo Electric said. While the source of the plutonium found at the plant was unclear, all three kinds of nuclear fuel at the complex could leak plutonium. Reactor number three is fueled partially by mixed oxide fuel, or MOX, which is made from plutonium and uranium. Most reactors' fuel is uranium, but plutonium is a regular byproduct of a reactor splitting uranium atoms in two. Some of the speeding subatomic particles of the fission process turn uranium into plutonium. So fuel rods that undergo fission get riddled with plutonium, though less than in MOX fuel. Thus, any of the reactors at Fukushima Daiichi could leak plutonium, as could spent fuel rods and cooling pools atop the reactor buildings. The most abundant type of plutonium, the 239 isotope, has a half-life of 24,000 years and emits alpha rays. If deep inside the body, alphas can cause healthy tissue to turn cancerous, but the rays are so weak that outside the body they can be stopped by skin or tissue paper. Alarm over radiation levels grew last Thursday when two workers were burned around their feet and ankles after they stepped into highly radioactive water inside the turbine building of reactor number three. A third worker who was wearing higher boots did not suffer the same exposure. Japanese news outlets reported that the three workers were released from the hospital on Monday. The nuclear power plant has been leaking radiation since a magnitude 9.0 earthquake and ensuing tsunami struck the northeastern coast of Japan on March 11th. The tsunami knocked out power to the system that cools the plant's fuel rods. The government spokesman said on Monday that it was too early for people to return to homes within a 12-mile radius of the plant. We cannot guarantee safety at the moment, as the situation is still under evaluation, he said. This is a major, unfolding, rolling disaster, continuing day by day, and is another physical manifestation of the book of Revelation. Revelation, chapter 16, verse 4. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became as blood. Five. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which are, and was, and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. Six. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Seven. And I heard another out of the altar say, even so, Lord, God, Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. 8. And 
the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch humans with fire. Nine, and humans were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which has power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. Revelation chapter 8 verse 10 And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers, and upon the fountains of waters. Eleven. And the name of the star is called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many humans died of the waters, because they were made bitter. And yes, we are well into the book of Revelation, and all these are more signs of the times, the end times, transition days, which is a continuing daily process of extraordinary events, happenings, and changes. Everything is connected, and everything is numbered.